I'll record as well and start with the interview. So hello, my name is Rikis Beresnevchus and today I have time is talking to Pierre from uh, uh, who is the director of for cargo operations at Chapman Freeborn, uh, an aviation solutions group uh, system company and the company specializes in air charter operations. So Pierre, how are you today? How is the life? I'm okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, busy day today as usual. Yeah, but I can imagine. So has has the past few weeks been busy for you or business as usual? No, in, in the last few weeks, in the last three weeks, the whole, um, it feels like the whole industry, cargo industry has been turned upside down. Yeah. Um, from um, mediocre type industry to suddenly a, um, a crazy industry and rushing around looking for capacity. So it's very busy at the moment. Yeah, so I've, uh, I've heard you noted somewhere that uh, you experienced a surge in cargo charter requests for humanitarian and medical supplies uh, from China into Europe. Has the situation changed in any way from the past few weeks or has it just gone up, 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 up and up? Um, basically, um, if you go back to, let's say, January. Yeah. January is supposed to be the, the low season in, in the air cargo business. And um, worldwide, the economies were not doing too great. And we were fixing a decent amount of flights as a company. Yeah. But, um, you, you know, suddenly then we heard about the coronavirus, which was really exposed to China only. I don't think anyone really believed this would become a pandemic. And um, looking at, um, you know, the, the sudden increase, everything really started off changing in our lives in, in the air cargo industry. Once the, um, Donald Trump and the United States imposed a travel restrictions from uh, 26 different European countries. Um, at that moment, uh, this is when, on that day, really everything really changed. Yeah. The next day there was a sudden um, influx of cargo from uh, Europe into USA to resupply the United States. Um, why? Uh, because mainly the um, capacity of passenger aircraft, uh, the belly space, which accounts for about 30% of the world's cargo capacity, if you think about it, um, the, the capacity of all these flights from Europe into USA were suddenly non-existent. Yeah, so is there any particular type of cargo that's, that's in high demand currently? Or? Well, just after the, the, the closure of the, the, the travel restrictions yeah. uh, took place from, US, from uh, Europe into USA, it was general commodity. Anything from car parts to um, electronics and European-made uh, manufactured products into USA. But then the corona, coronavirus actually developed and spread it across Europe, um, namely Italy, Spain, and, and France, where things got really bad, as we've all seen in the news. And uh, thereafter, what happened very quickly was a matter of days. Um, countries started closing their borders. Uh, people were put in lockdown. And this suddenly increased the rapid demand um, for transporting face masks yeah. and personal protection equipment, which we call PPE, from China into Europe. And this is really, I would say, probably 95% of the commodity today and the request that we're getting is actually to transport equipment from China, not only to Europe now, now it's from China to the rest of the world. Yeah, so um, are you just flying more planes or the, the planes that were previously flying just getting more full and full? Um, Pretty much, I wouldn't say we're flying more planes, but um, the, the supply, the capacity that existed on the market yeah. uh, has pretty much run out. So if one is looking for an airplane today and they send us an inquiry, we'd like to fly some cargo from, let's say, China to Vilnius or China to Poland or wherever it might be, yeah. it could take up to 10 days. That's the, about the lead time that we need, 10 days to find an aircraft capable of transporting cargo. Um, simply because there are not enough airplanes at the moment, cargo planes available on the market. What's the, the big change is that now passenger airlines are starting to um, modify or allow their aircraft to fly uh, cargo instead of passengers. So cargo in the belly and cargo in the passenger seats as well. Okay, so has the change, the fact that airlines have now allowed the passenger aircraft to fly cargo has, has that fact changed you like helped you at all or was it just 
something that's happening on the side and doesn't impact you at all? No, it, it's really helping us. Um, yeah. if, if this was in a normal time, I don't think any passenger airline would be allowed by the aircraft manufacturer <clears throat> and also the civil aviation authorities to allow uh, a passenger plane to be used as cargo because it's not really designed for that or licensed for that. Yeah. However, um, airlines are struggling and uh, passenger airlines are struggling and they need to fly to make money and to keep their pilots employed. Um, it's all part of the big economic formula yeah. Yeah. of running an airline. So it's desperate times. But the, on the good side of thing is that, uh, you know, passenger airplanes allowing cargo is starting to help us um, to alleviate the backlog of cargo there is in China to fly to other countries with, um, you know, face mask and, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, that kind of cargo. Is there so any, like, still bottlenecks due to the fact that, you know, these are passenger aircraft at the end of the day, you know, they cannot take the same loads as uh, cargo aircraft. Are there still bottlenecks or it's slowly mm -hmm. coming up to the point where you can be more free uh, in your backlog? Um, I, I would say the passenger airlines really started flying a week ago. Yeah. It started off with one or two main uh, flag carriers in Europe that I've seen um, offering, and also one Chinese operator, offering wide-body passenger aircraft to fly between China and Europe. Yeah. And now yeah. other airlines um, got onto the bandwagon to offer the same similar capacity. Yeah. Whether it's a small, smaller aircraft like an Airbus A320 or Boeing 777 passenger, um, you know, those airplanes are now flying. But I, can, I don't see much of a difference in terms of the backlog, there is still a, a huge amount of demand for airplanes from China into all parts of the world, especially Europe at the moment. Is it still growing or is it flattening a bit now? It's still growing, right? Not stopping. It is still yeah. growing at the moment. Okay, so were you affected by the governmental restrictions by any way, like in terms of the air traffic control or maybe uh, mm -hmm. certain uh, aircraft registered in certain countries not being able to land and like, where your clients um, need them? Aircraft registration doesn't really matter at the yeah. moment. At the moment, it's the, um, the desperate need for capacity, which is important. But what we're finding of a challenge at the moment is if um, it's that every country are imposing restrictions um, to different degrees. Yeah. Um, so some you know, countries are totally closing the borders. No foreigners can come in. Or you need to put a, if you want to travel to a certain country, for instance, a, a crew of an operator, um, they will be put into a quarantine, quarantine for two weeks. And we can't allow crews to go in quarantine for two weeks. Yeah. It really make sure. operation much harder. But the regulations in every country is changing on a daily basis. So keeping track of the regulations on a daily basis is really, it's a really big challenge. Because we may confirm a flight today um, for a client, but the flight's going to happen in two, three days' time. By that time, the regulations may change. Yeah. And uh, we may be prevented from doing a flight to a certain country. For instance, we're operating a flight from Mavion Express today. And just for that purpose, um, we're flying to China now to collect cargo to fly into um, Poland, I believe, in the south of Poland. But we're flying on a, we're flying on a heavy crew. Um, simply because we want to avoid doing crew rest in China. Yeah. So it's important, but it's not only applicable to China, every country in the world, including South America and USA are imposing different restrictions and we need to try and abide to all the restrictions um, that exist. So it's like a, just a maze navigating all the restrictions and everything. Were there a lot of crews that were quarantined during these past few weeks or was it just that air occurrence? No, no, we, we had some crews, especially going back to 10 days ago, the very beginning, uh, some yeah. crews were put into quarantine and it's, you know, that means you're blocking a crew from going home and operating an aircraft for 14 days. It's quite damaging for an airline, um, especially during the early days when we found out that restrictions were being imposed on short notice basis. Yeah. Sometimes there was no notice. You wake up one day and suddenly there's a, a restri restriction being imposed for entry of crews, and that can be very damaging. Now, I think um, the, the communication in the world of aviation is a little bit more fluid. Um, we're being advised at least 24 hours prior to a flight that a certain restriction or limitation will take place. 
Okay, so uh, one thing that the coronavirus is, uh, has accelerated is uh, cargo modifications, uh, and I mean uh, cargo bags for passenger aircraft where you can put cargo on the seats. Has that helped you at all, or is it just too early to judge right now? I think it's starting to help us. Um, okay. Only to recently, in the last few days, yeah. we've charted capacity from um, passenger airlines to fly cargo in, um, in seats. Um, but I think it's going to be quite beneficial. The reason is, as well, is that most of the cargo we transport from China are face masks or um, personal protection equipment. And these normally are fitted. The cargo comes into big pallets at the airport. And um, the, it comes into big pallets at the airport. But also, the, these pallets can be broken down into smaller packages and yeah. each package is only about 50 by 50 by 50 centimeters. And this cargo can easily be fitted inside the cabin of a passenger aircraft under the seat in the overhead bins and under seats as well. So it's quite a good volume, you know, small items and not too heavy either. So it's, it's actually matches a passenger cabin pretty well, I think. Okay, so do you have previous experience of fitting these smaller boxes on passenger aircraft despite uh, there were that there were no like passenger cargo modifications. No, it's the first time. Uh, okay. I think it's the first time for everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So uh, I think, despite the crisis, I think the cargo sector is thriving currently now. Right? We would say that, right? Uh, so what do you think are the best like opportunities for cargo companies right now? What are, what are like the best geographical areas for? Uh, for uh, just to transport cargo and yeah, and some additional revenue, I guess. Yeah, no, it's you know, uh, some um, some companies are talking, or you know, journalists are talking about rates going up. Yes, it's true. The rates, the cargo rates, have doubled to and from China. Um, but you know, you have to remember as well that a lot of airlines are suffering. Yeah. And a lot of airline, you know, people are losing their jobs. So at the same time, you got to sustain the aviation industry as well. Without them, we wouldn't be able to bring the, um, the relief goods. But generally, if, you know, if you're a cargo airline today, what you need to do is actually get your aircraft. Um, or if you're a passenger airline, is get your aircraft available on the market to fly to China and back. But it's not just to China. And, you know, there are other places in the world that also manufacture masks in the Southeast Asia, and we've seen very little of that. Everything seems to be focused on China at the moment, but I think if more passenger airlines provide their capacity available to the market, um, I think this would relief, uh, be a, a big relief to the crisis at the moment. Uh, that's where the, the focus should be. Some airlines are struggling to put their passenger aircraft on the market because of union agreements. Yeah and um, complications, you know, to get certified to fly, um, you know, a, car, a passenger airplane to be used as a freighter. But that needs to be expedited on, uh, expedited on the um, licensing and approval. Uh, that needs to go much faster to, be, to allow airlines to fly and earn some revenue as well to fly relief cargo. Uh, would you say there is a like uh, one particular main challenge that, that affects you as a company, as in and the industry as a whole? One particular channel you're saying that affects Ch us. Challenge, challenge, change, challenge, um, charge, like in um, revenue. No, no, charge. challenge, like as in like difficulties. Are there any particular difficulties for the industry <laughs> right now? No, a oh, challenge. Okay, yeah. the, the challenge is. Um, coordinating the amount of inquiries. Um, there is a surplus of demand um, at the moment on the market and it's trying to please everybody. Um, the, the amount of inquiries is phenomenal. We're trying to respond to every single inquiry and please everybody with a rate that's acceptable. A lot of the clients are finding that the, the rates, the charges uh, per kilo are too expensive, um, but there's not much we can do on that. We're not the ones uh, deciding the price on the market. Um, so that's a challenge and there is simply too much demand at the moment and the, the, um, the capacity is just not enough even though passenger airplanes are starting to be, become available to help out it's still not enough. Do you think the corona crisis would spur back the 
cargo sector back into growth because for the past year or so it was just dwindling down constantly. Do you yeah. think it will kickstart in the long term, like, or it's just a short term like buffer for the, for now? Um, I think we're going to see my predictions, and this is pu uh, purely based on what I think, not any anybody else's views. I think the surge would go on for at least two months. Yeah. Um, until when the virus starts to decrease and there is enough supplies of face mask and other um, equipment for the hospitals, especially in the population. So there will be a decrease in this and eventually things will happen again when people are released from lockdown and they can go out and that could be another further few months. But also you have to remember that a lot of the industries, different industries have stopped. Automotive industry has stopped producing cars at the moment uh, because of the lockdown. So there are a lot of other industries, not just automotive, but others that are totally stopped. And it's going to take some time to recuperate from this. Um, it could take between now and Christmas before we see any, any uh, positive climbing cargo. Um, because also there's so much unemployment that's starting to happen around the world that to get back to where we were before, it's going to take some time to re-employ people, yeah. but also unemployment means that there is less disposable income on the market for people to be able to spend money once the lockdown has been, um, you know, uh, uh, released. So it's, it's a very diff difficult formula um, to figure out what's going to happen in the future. But I think there is going to be a catch up period um, after this when, it could be two months, could be four months. I really don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Um, has the Corona uh, virus stopped heavy lift projects, or they are still going on, but they're more rare, maybe? Um, we, we're still having heavy heavy lift projects on the go at the moment, and they're not stopping. The only thing that I could see, perhaps this week is a little bit early, but next week I believe we're going to start seeing um, projects slowing down, not because of you know, the end of a project, uh, pretty much this project is still going on simply because the, we cannot find the right aircraft to match the project cargo that needs to be moved. Yeah. Uh, right now, even we're, we're at a stage that even Antonov 124 and Antonov 325 are being used for the, um, for the COVID-19 uh, relief lights. And that's, uh, these are the kind of aircraft used for project cargo. So that's taking away the major project aircraft capacity out of the market. Are Antonovs used frequently currently? Or? Yes, they are. Uh, for the coronavirus relief yeah. flights, they're probably, I would say, flying every day at the moment from China into Europe or China into South America and into the US as well. So those aircraft are helping out as well. The, the advantage to the large Antonovs is that they take a large volumetric vo uh, space of cargo. And most of the cargo we carry from China is not heavy, but very volumetric. Yeah. So that's where there is an advantage to the Antonovs. Okay, uh, so let's just get back to the general industry, I guess, for the, uh, for the ending. Uh, in the past few years, how has the global factors, various global factors affected your business? Like trade wars, did you see any dip in demand or as you are the fact that you are a charter company you could sustain your business or did you have to maybe your slow down a bit um generally in the last year we've seen a, a slowdown of business yeah. um you know and and that's yeah you know there's very various reasons for that a uh, trade war is one of them then the fuel price was going up 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 um so that does affect directly what we do and projects from going ahead around the world is directly connected to that. Uh, there's also a lot of um, embargoes and restrictions that we need to be um, concerned about. That's sometimes that will prevent us from doing certain types of business that we wish sometimes we could do. Uh, but we need to carefully follow all the regulations that exist. So it's becoming a more regulated world, we know. Um, you've got wars and you've got trade wars. Um, you know, the, um, the Middle East has been quite um, unstable for quite some time and that's created a lot of worries in the region and therefore this has impacted before the coronavirus problem. Yeah. Um, that, that became a significant worry 
and you know question mark over the future of the region. So everything does impact um, the way we're doing business. But generally, as a company, as a group, Chevron Freeborn, we have been somewhat um, spared from um, such events because you also have humanitarian events, uh, natural disasters that happen around the world. And that normally replenishes the lack of work we may have in, in a certain area. We may uh, be driven by a period of high intense, intensive humanitarian work whether it's a, um, an earthquake uh, that happens in a country and we must provide relief lights, yeah. that will normally complement the, the part of the year and the sectors in which we're not doing too well, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So yeah, great, uh, great speaking to you, Pierre. Thank you for the interview and uh, I wish you the best in these hectic times. Thank you very much. In a few weeks, it may be different. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it develops.